Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry presents Season of Joy, Reflections for the 50 Days of Easter. Today's reflection is by the Most Reverend Jeffrey S. Grob. Bishop Grob was reared on a dairy farm just outside Cross Plains, Wisconsin, and ordained to the priesthood for the Archdiocese of Chicago in 1992 and as an auxiliary bishop in 2020. Over the years, he has been blessed by God to serve in various positions from associate pastor and pastor to chancellor and judicial vicar. Now let's listen to today's scripture followed by Bishop Grob's reflection. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you, in a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. As we move through the Easter season, the empty tomb seems farther and farther away, doesn't it? The meaning of the resurrection rather than the fact of the resurrection, moves to the forefront of our weekly reflections. The ongoing presence of the risen Lord to successive generations in the church becomes more important than stories of a mysterious Savior appearing here and there. We come to realize that there's quite a difference between believing that Jesus rose from the dead and believing in the risen Christ. Believing that Jesus rose from the dead involves looking back at the resurrection from a distance, seeing it as an external event that took place long ago and was proven or demonstrated to the first generation of Christians in various mysterious ways. Believing in the resurrection suggests focusing on the present and to a more intimate experience. Believing in the risen Christ involves a personal relationship and the acceptance of an invitation to enter into that relationship more deeply here and now. Actually, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? For instance, out of your own experience of faith, hope, and love, wouldn't it be more important to say, I believe in my wife, rather than I believe that my wife exists? You see, that language points to the heart. When we believe in someone, we're more inclined to trust that person to dance in the dark with that person, so to speak. Let's look back at the gospel for a moment then. The setting is the table on the night before Jesus died. Judas left the room. Jesus speaks in language that is beyond time. He points to his death and resurrection, not as historical moments, but as opening moments of an ongoing event in which his friends will participate. Both Jesus' language and its content are mysterious and timeless. They deal not with facts of history, but with an ongoing, unfolding reality, which we believe is the kingdom of God, the inbreaking of God in our lives, in our world, a renewal of all creation in a very profound way. What does Jesus say? Recall the scriptures. And I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. What profound and comforting words, huh? It makes no sense to believe simply that Jesus is telling the truth here. Rather, we are invited to believe in what he is saying as he promises to send the Holy Spirit, that advocate, the paraclete, that is the mysterious way in which he will continue to be present for all time, to inspire wisdom, to give courage, to surround in love. This role of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the disciples back then and in ours now is beautifully captured in the words of the fourth Eucharistic prayer, which states in part that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. This is what we are living already now, whether we realize it or not. We hope you've enjoyed today's Season of Joy Reflection. Tune in tomorrow for the next edition in our Easter series. And if you haven't already joined our email list, visit htoh.us to sign up and receive more inspirational content delivered right to your inbox. May God bless your heart and the hearts of all your loved ones.